Hi, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Bites. And let's go straight to expensive houses. Melbourne's median house price is the highest it's ever been. Yep, it's up, up, up. And Seven had the map to show it. Bo Morris up 16.6, Frankston South up 15.7, and Ferntree Gully up 15.2%. But hang on, Ferntree Gully is not on the peninsula, and Frankston is not near the Dandenongs. What? But Seven's wrong map was nothing compared with Ten's wrong photo. Rugby League immortal Norm Proven has died aged 88. Oh dear, that is not Norm Proven. It's his opponent, Arthur Summons, captured in this iconic embrace with Proven following the 1963 Grand Final. So were Ten quick to fix the embarrassing mistake? Well, no. Showing the wrong gladiator one, two, three, four more times that afternoon. Off to the sin bin for ten. But now to the Korean TV show everyone is raving about. The Squid Game has smashed Bridgerton as Netflix's biggest show to grace our screens. In 28 days, Netflix has confirmed Squid Game reached 111 million fans worldwide and counting. And the Australian media is cashing in, covering every angle. From school kids watching the show, and Kyle and Jackie O taking on the honeycomb challenge, to the latest fashion trends, and satire on ABC. And what about the politicians? Do they like a little bit of squid frenzy? Cue Bill Shorten. Now I'm watching the Liberal Party and the National Parties act like an episode of contestants of the squid game. So, how did the zinger land? Not cool, says Sky's Paul Murray. Oh, squid game, did you understand? Did you hear it? <laughs> And Barnaby wasn't impressed either. Well, um, I think Bill, God bless his cotton socks, has a lot of spare time on him, on his hands if you can watch the squid game. I must admit, I, I haven't seen it. I'll, I'll go to the nearest aquarium and see what they get up to. <laughs> Classic Barnaby, who has a lot on his plate this week. That's aside from waking up to breakfast TV. Barnaby. Morning. Oh, on the mate. Nash. <laughs> Have All you? Right. Okay. Yep, it's morning. <laughs> yeah, good to see you again. Good to see you too, Carl. Do you feel and like the? Listeners. Do you well, feel not like? I can see them. <laughs> this morning, Joyce, good morning. Good morning, ABC list, 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 viewers. Listeners, viewers, all wanted to know if the Nationals are going to back net zero by 2050. But all Barnaby could tell them is what's driving the decision. It's all about regional constituents to represent regional people. Do what's right for regional people. But is it yes or no for the emissions target, Barnaby? The clock is ticking down to Glasgow. Are you arguing, throwing toys? My party room is diligently going through it. We have to be diligent, prudent and, and diligent. Talk about a damp squid. But now to the pandemic and the death of an American giant. Tonight, remembering Colin Powell, the barrier-breaking soldier and statesman dying after a battle with COVID. And the tributes flowed, including this backhander from former President Donald Trump. Wonderful to see Colin Powell, who made big mistakes on Iraq and famously so-called weapons of mass destruction, be treated in death so beautifully by the fake news media. But anyway, may he rest in peace. How uh, touching. But on Fox News, Powell was not resting in peace. The fully vaccinated people are being hospitalized and fully vaccinated people are dying from COVID. And here we have a very high profile example that is gonna require more truth, more truth from our government, from our health leaders as well. Yep, if you're after truth, Fox is the place. Or as uh, CNN's Don Lemon put it, It is disgraceful. And crazy. But there was more to come. Colin Powell was fully vaccinated against COVID. And yet, according to his family and doctors, Colin Powell died of COVID. Which means? Well, it tells you you've been lied to. Vaccines may be highly useful for some people, but across the population, they do not solve COVID. They also offer no protection against bullshit. What Tucker didn't tell his audience is that Powell was 84, had Parkinson's and blood cancer, and his immune system was severely compromised. Also, the vaccines are 90% effective at preventing hospitalization. And that is the truth. And we'll be back with Media Watch, 9.15 Monday night on the ABC, also via social media. Don't miss it. <laughs>